water is the breath of the earth. It is always on the move. It evaporates and becomes liquid once more. It seeps deep into the ground and is thrust upwards following the unyielding rhythm of an unending cycle. There are many rhythms, fast and slow, the heartbeat, a breath in and out, the blink of an eye, the rhythm of day and night, of ebb and flow, the cadence of the changing seasons and the endless rhythm of a successive climates. This land has been hidden beneath ice many meters thick, beneath unfathomably deep waters, it has been a desert and for eons a tropical forest. For millions of years it has been home to the eagle, the hare and the scarce large blue. And all that time their lives have evolved in harmony with the constantly changing landscape of the Dutch Delta. For millions of years now, the rhythm of the seasons has caused everything to start anew in spring. Couples form everywhere, and everybody sets about the task of producing children. The females always choose the best looking and strongest males. It's their guarantee of healthy offspring. The sea eagle too does his utmost to please his mate. The movement of the waters seems sluggish, but appearances can be deceiving and it never stagnates. The heartbeat of ebb and flow is felt everywhere, and everywhere life streams through the Dutch Delta. Much rain has fallen upstream, and in distant foreign mountains, snow is melting. The rivers are becoming wider and their currents stronger. They need space. Each year, they burst their banks. The animals know this and seek refuge, but humans aren't put off so easily. Their struggle against the rising waters is continuous. They build dikes and drain the water using windmills and pumping stations. Water fertilizes the soil, 
but the polders have to be kept dry. If there's one animal that really has made the polder its home, it has to be the hare. He lives in the meadows and doesn't need a hole or nest for shelter. He makes a simple lair for himself by flattening a patch of grass. It's the toughest animal of the delta. Daytime melts the night's frost. The air is filled with seductive scents. The hare has only enemies. He relies on his sharp senses for protection and on his sprint, handy when looking for a mate too. But first, he has to win a round of boxing. have their eye on the same female, a situation that spells trouble. In a swampy meadow, a newborn butterfly finds its way up towards the sun. She pumps up her wings to make them ready for flight. Once they are warm and dry, she can explore her habitat. She's a scarce large blue, and she's as scarce as the flowers she visits. Hungry, the young butterflies feast on the flowers. They fill themselves with nectar in one feeding. They're in a hurry for time is short and there is much to do. Only the females who are still virgins are eligible to mate, which doesn't make the male's quest any easier. Nevertheless, it's worthwhile, because once he's found a female, the one-off breeding session lasts an hour and a half.
When it's over, the males go in search of a new adventure. For the female, things are just beginning. She has just a couple of days to lay as many as 100 eggs, which is easier said than done, for she lays her eggs in the clustered flowers of the great burnet, and only there. She can lay just one egg in each burnet, and the bud can't yet have been flowering for too long. She goes from flower to flower, using her antennae to smell whether or not it's occupied. If the burnet is still vacant, she lays an egg in the very centre of the bud. 100 vacant burnets are what she needs and she won't rest until she has found a safe home for each of her eggs. After a week of hard work, all her eggs have a home. The scarce large blue female's task is complete. She is tired. She is old. There aren't many of these swampy meadows left. The scarce large blue and the great burnet have become a rare twosome. Once these meadows were very common in the delta, but as a result of the struggle against the water and constant drainage, they have become very rare. This is the realm of the sea eagle. But its nest only seems empty. It's time to celebrate now that the two beautiful chicks have hatched and their beady eyes peer out into the world. They know that they will be lord and master here. Foolish crows taunt them, so the eagle is forced to assert its authority. The parents share care duties for their two strong young, and for the coming month, that means constantly bringing food to the nest. Hard work is starting in earnest for the Grebes too. They've just become the proud parents of their first chick. The little Grebe is amazed by the thing sticking out of its body. Maybe they taste good. The young herons are very hungry and make an awful lot of noise about it. It's the same story with the spoonbills. They're just as greedy. The young grebe's hunch that those things might be edible was right. Its first meal consists of feathers. Everyone in the grebe family eats feathers. Fish go in whole and the feathers protect their stomachs from the bones. The leftovers are vomited up as little balls. The chick thinks it's a great idea and starts gnawing at its mother.
In the middle of the day, it grows dark and the clouds pour rain onto the swampy land. Just like water and clay, rain, wind, fog and clouds are very much part of this land. The irregular rhythm of the weather refreshes and feeds the delta, keeping it resilient and fertile. are growing fast. And that has its consequences. The parents have to work hard to keep their young satisfied. It's almost impossible to provide enough food. They're not at all picky. Birds, fish, a small hare every now and then, dead or alive, it doesn't matter to them. Whatever is easiest to catch has had it. In the Beesbosch, the rivers are met by the tides of the sea. After a devastating flood, humans here were forced to admit defeat. The beaver has known forever that willows make great building material. Humans started plantations in this area, conquered by the rivers, and the willow tree became the backbone of a huge industry, and with that, prosperity. For a long time, hunting and deforestation kept the sea eagle away. When humans left the plantations, sea eagles seized their opportunity and the willows now form a large swamp forest, which is the perfect place for the eagle to rear its young. He is now king of the delta once more. Now that the sea eagle hunts here again, everything is changing. Its prey sense the threat and have adapted their behavior accordingly. They now hide their young even better and graze less in open spaces. Since they eat differently as a result, the landscape is changing too. The grass grows longer and seedlings get a better chance. And so, a pair of sea eagles can change an entire habitat. And that while their sole motivation is to feed their young.
When the parents bring home a nice fat eel, it's party time in the nest. The grebes are more fussy. They'll settle for nothing less than fresh fish. Everywhere in the polders and floodplains, pools and ditches are teeming with life. Meadow birds and hares have simple nests on the ground. With such a threat from the sky, that may not seem like a good idea. The harrier swoops down to steal small hares and other birds' chicks. No matter how young the hare or black-tailed godwit is, each knows to keep perfectly still in the event of danger. And when danger comes too close, the parents provide distraction and, if necessary, sacrifice themselves. Try catching a hare on the run. Speed is what they are built for. They're Europe's fastest land animal. The cheetah of the polder. The young hares spent the day alone, keeping still. Their parents keep a distance so as not to arouse suspicion. is less active at night, and as soon as it's dark, the young are finally allowed out to play. Mothers, however, 
can never relax. It seems that the odd hair from father along is accosting her baby, and mother is having none of it. The little hare bolts for its lair, its own safe patch of flattened grass. Like the hare, the stork has also discovered the flat man-made landscape. Here in the polders and floodplains, he has found a richly varied menu. Baby hares, frogs, snakes, insects and fish. The thorny stickleback poses no problems to the stork. It's blisteringly hot today, and the stork provides a cool shower for her young. The little hare has grown considerably. Already he has survived many dangers, but new threats keep cropping up. All he knows is that he should keep perfectly still. Today, however, that strategy is a dangerous one. No sooner has one danger passed than a new one presents itself. A stork is out hunting food for its chick. He collects the leftovers after the mowing. The young hare makes himself as small as possible. If he could, he'd make himself invisible. Finally, the mother realizes that her young is in danger. But the stork shows no interest whatsoever. There is so much here for the taking that a live hare is far too much bother.
The young grebes embark upon an exploratory expedition. They're big enough now to venture farther away from the nest. The eagles are almost fully grown. From wingtip to wingtip, they are almost two meters wide. The nest has become too small for the family. The young female is claustrophobic and has been practicing for two weeks. They are now three months old, and it's time to learn to fly, even if her little brother is in the way. At first, flying is a lot of falling. Well, it's a start. Her brother watches her antics with some concern. He wouldn't dream of leaving the nest. Mum and Dad will soon be back with fresh fish. Yes, look, a fresh delivery of eel and it's all for him. That's a disappointment. Away from home for the first time and no food. A stiff branch can give you cramped claws. She wants to return home, but that's higher up, so she will have to fly. But how? Letting go of the branch is terrifying, even though she feels that somehow she is flying. She's done it. She's found her wings. But now a new problem presents itself. She doesn't yet know her own weight. last, one that supports her. Keeping balance is something she needs to learn too. And on top of all that, she's being watched. The young eagle embarks upon her first long flight including a landing on the nest.
his sister's adventure inspires the brother. The flat land of the Dutch Delta looks wetter than it is. Surprisingly, the polders are very dry. The land can only be used effectively if the water is continuously drained. And drainage is a Dutch speciality. The dry polders pose a problem to the scarce large blue that has lived here for so many years. She needs swampy meadows, and they are scarce. Here, a two millimeter caterpillar can develop into a beautiful butterfly. And when she has eaten enough of the burnet, she sets off to look for a new source of food. She descends from her safe spot in the flower towards a grave danger below. The downstairs neighbors are hotheads. Common elbowed red ants attack anything, even things bigger than themselves. So you'd expect the caterpillar to avoid the ant nest. But far from giving it a wide berth, she wants to get inside. The caterpillar has shed its skin four times to permit growth. And so now it should smell just like the ant larvae. The question is, is that really the case? In order to attract attention, she mimics the sound of an ant. She's ignored. One ant recognizes the scent, but something's not right. She is about to sting, but hesitates. The thing doesn't just smell of ant, it sounds like an ant too. She decides that the caterpillar is an ant larvae and drags it into the nest. By way of gratitude, the caterpillar excretes a nice sweet substance. Not that it's all peace and harmony now. The caterpillar has to eat ant larvae every now and then, and when she does, her camouflage is put to the test. She ransacks the nest for 10 months and secretly eats hundreds of larvae. Then finally, she finds herself a spot high up in the nest where she can pupate. Four weeks later heralds the most dangerous moment of her life. It's time for the butterfly to emerge, but she is no longer disguised and the ant has become her greatest enemy. Very early one morning, the chrysalis breaks open.
the newborn butterfly must make haste while the ants are still dormant. Now is her only chance to escape. She finds herself some warmth in the morning sun, pumps up her wings and lets them dry and harden. Her body is already full of eggs, which makes her very vulnerable. The males are waiting for her. They must get to work as soon as possible. She has to lay 100 eggs in 100 large burnets to produce 100 new scarce large blues. The sea eagle steered clear of the delta for a couple of hundred years, but it has now returned. The big change started with the first human footsteps in the clay. Men drove out the sea eagle and beaver. And in a few thousand years, humans changed a landscape that had taken millions to be created. But what seems a long time to humans is just a few bars in nature's delta song. Now that terrain is being given back to nature, the landscape is starting to look like it did all those years ago. People are beginning to understand that there are other options. They no longer see water as an enemy. The eagles leave the family nest. It will be years before they start a family of their own. For now, they will simply enjoy their freedom and explore all four corners of the delta. Man has conquered the water and shaped the land to suit his needs. He now understands that he is just like the eagle, the hare and the scarce large blue, a vulnerable creature that can't survive alone.
This is the Dutch Delta, home to humans for some 8,000 years and home to animals for millions. Off the coast to the north, a young eagle discovers new land that has been created by the combined energies of man, wind and water. We are finally becoming familiar with the rhythms of nature, in which everything is always in motion, constantly changing as it always has done and always will. <laughs> 